Hey, what's going on? David from the band Janus. If you're not in the now, then you're in the nothing. So you guys are out with uh, Chevelle right now. So how's the uh, Chevelle tour been going for you? It's been going great. The crowds have been really great. Uh, I think every show's been sold out. Right. Uh, and we're playing a lot of new stuff off the new record. We weren't sure how well it was going to go with the crowd when we first got here. And, uh, the new song, the record is coming out March 27th. So it's been going great. We've had hits at just about all the shows. Um, yeah, it's been, we couldn't have asked for a better tour and a better response. Now talking about doing some of the new stuff live, do you see the crowd reacting to any particular song more than any of the others? You know, this new record in general is a bit heavier and darker than the last record, so um, I would say that there's a song right in the middle of the set called Promise to No One, which is probably the heavy, one of the heaviest songs we've ever done. And typically, yeah, that's, just, that's usually the turning point in the set where the crowd starts to get a little more physical. Get out. Get it done. Bust it out and go on to the next one. So, talk a little bit about the new record. Um, how would you compare going in recording that one to the previous one? Um, this record, well, they say you, and they say it, they're right. They say you have uh, all your whole life to make your first record and then about 10 minutes to make your second. And we actually uh, were fortunate to have a label that was, gave us our freedom artistically. And uh, and then once we kind of got our bearings and the demos started to really come together and we saw sort of a light at the end of the tunnel, that's when the deadlines kind of came and came quickly. And, um, which in a sense I think it was good because it forced us to get our butts in gear and get the job done and work some late nights, which sucked, but I think it, it ended up being a much more cohesive record than the first because bits of that first record were written this year and then a couple of years would go by and then we'd write another song. Or, um, the majority of it happened close to the end, but there were pieces of that record that were from, from a few years back. And uh, so in that sense, I think that the, having very little time forced us to get our act together quickly. Now that said, I think we also had a lot of life experience to draw from, from being on the road for a year plus supporting Red Right Return. We went through a lot of um, different experiences that that uh, were both good and bad and, and all that stuff gave us a pretty big well to draw from content wise when we kind of went back and uh, started tearing into uh, the writing process. And how many songs did you guys write for the new record and how many of those ended up on the record? <coughs> there are 10 on the record. There are kind of two that are still in demo format that we may finish up and turn into uh, bonus tracks for, for certain things and then there's probably sketch demo format laying around that may or may not become songs. Some don't have any um, vocal layering or melodies to them at all, just guitar ideas. But um, yeah, we kind of narrowed the focus, particularly around the fact that we want to get it done get quickly. Now, do you have a personal favorite song off the new record? Maybe one that means something to you personally? Yeah, I have, I have a few actually. Um, Lifeless, which is a kind of a darker, heavier, sludgier tune. Very different than anything off the last record. It's one of my favorites. And it's, um, it's just got a it's, it's got a really strong kind of dark heavy feel to it, which I really like. And it's uh, it's a lot of fun to sing and play live. And then of course, Promise to No One, which is the the heavier heavier tune I talked about earlier. That one's just got crazy double bass going nuts and screams in it. It's a lot of fun to play live. But it's uh, it was a lot of fun to record too, just to kind of go in that direction and tear it on tape. A good editing point to pick up a by. <laughs> good classic country here. <laughs> nice. Get the gun, get on your mind. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Junior, he's a man. But, uh, that's, uh, talk a little bit about some of the, the cities you guys have been playing out on the Chevelle Tour. Uh, any any of those kind of stand out in your mind as kind of the most memorable? Yeah, you know what we um, we typically have always hated playing New York City because it's just logistically so painful to get in and out of there. Mm -hmm. There's no real place you can put your van. There's no like, easy place to, to stay behind and get out of the city if you want to save money. And 
costs a lot of money to park there. I mean, we spent hundreds of dollars just to park it wow. to get in and out of there. Yeah, you, it costs us money every time we play New York. And so we typically dread it. But this time around, I think we, would, we, uh, we were fortunate enough to parking went smooth. Set up for the show went smooth. We actually had a, a dressing room this time around, which, you know, That's I ended up, yeah, I ended up warming up my voice in the rain and then, you know, on the street somewhere because there's not even alleys you can hide in in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, you just kind of wander around the garbage on the side of the street. And, um, but yeah, and then the show came off really well too. It was one of our, I think, one of our best shows on tour, and, um, which is good because whenever you play in New York, there's all this, there's typically the label comes out, a lot of press come out, there's a lot of pressure on those shows typically and so that was a lot of fun and then uh, Portland Maine which is just one of my favorite towns way up north right on the Atlantic Ocean it's just a cool kick butt town and a really great theater that we played at and uh, Niagara Falls actually was a blast that was a really cool place and the theater was really cool it's this old haunted theater where um, yeah I guess they used to, the mob used to kill people in the basement of it or whatever and some somebody uh, the actress has hung herself or something. She haunts like this other lower level. It was really cool. Now let's uh, flip to the opposite end of that. Um, are, are there any places that when you guys get out on the road, you're like, damn, we're gonna go back there again? Any place where you've had a really bad experience? Um, yeah, I wouldn't. I, I can't say that there are. We haven't. Uh, you know, I would say New York's been the only one that we were kind of dreading that we've had just a nightmare before logistically getting in and out of there. And, uh, but you know what, we had a great show this last time, so I have to scratch them off the list. Kind of made up for it. Yeah. So, talk a little bit about these crazy things. from the stage um, of the crowd and within 10 seconds getting off the stage I posted to my Facebook or we Janice posted to the Janice Facebook page and 50 people tag themselves in it and all of a sudden all of their friends see them at the show you know via our picture and people are communicating talking about it uh, it's just a level of connectivity that definitely I think changed the way people behave and interact with their fans. Mm -hmm. So I think it's good. Let's talk a little bit about uh, how you keep yourself busy out on the road. What do you do to occupy yourself in between shows? Um, Mike and I still, uh, we work on our laptops. We do um, still have a day job of sorts to help pay the bills and stuff back nice. in Chicago. So he and I do like web, web design or, and or print design. Mm -hmm. He's more on the development side, I'm more on the design side. Um, but outside of that, if we're not doing that, I, I'm in this routine now. I've been running for like half an hour, 45 minutes before the show. Um, it's getting a really good workout, getting the blood flowing. And, uh, and uh, our bass player and drummer, they pretty much just drink Crown Royal. <laughs> from the time they wake up to the time they go to bed. No. Nothing wrong with that. No, they're big into uh, working out. Our, our bass player is... Uh, is militant about his workouts. He's brought a system where he's, he's doing it on on tour. He's brought giant rubber bands that he straps to the hotel door. And so yeah, he's super into that. Um, these guys are really into the show Walking Dead, I think. Or, oh, yeah. 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 They're, constantly, yeah. they're constantly cuddling on the couch watching that. Yeah, it's kind of creepy. Well, they only got one more week of that, and then you don't have to worry about that until next season. So. Yeah. No. Maybe they'll get into something here. Yeah. Maybe they'll just buy another bottle of crown. Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, if, if we were to go through your music collection, go through your iPod or whatever, would, would there be any particular artists that would kind of throw us for a loop that you're listening to? Anybody that would surprise us? Probably. I'm a, um, I love a lot of old, like super old Van Morrison. Nice. Like Astral Weeks and his real outer space stuff. Not like the brown-eyed girl kind of uh, wedding stuff, yeah. but um, yeah, he's just one of my favorite singers of all time. And uh, I have 
probably be the only one. That and um, I have a lot of these like guided meditation little MP3s and CDs that I've listened to that just kind of, for me, in, in order to sing really well, I just have to be super relaxed, like super zen down, and uh, those always help. So does the running. Running helps too. The endorphins. Mm -hmm. uh, they can just totally chill you out before a show and help you kind of get in the zone. Right. Um, what's next for for you guys after the Chanel tour? After this tour, we're we're back in Chicago for a couple weeks, and we're going to be doing um, some headlining dates in the Midwest. So we're going to be playing in uh, uh, the Machine Shop Flint, Michigan. We're doing our CD release party at Cubby Bear. Um, March 28th, yes. and we're doing, um, I think we're hitting Madison, Peoria, just some Midwest regional markets, and then we're going out for a couple weeks with Cabo. Wow, nice. I just heard the new Cabo record. It's actually really good. Cool. Yeah, yeah we're excited. We're excited to head out with those guys. I would say Cabo and your guys' record, and there's this uh, kind of obscure band called uh, Cocaine Mustache. Cocaine mustache. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's really interesting. They're uh, kind of my three favorites right now that I'm, I've been jamming on. So. Cool, very cool. Yeah. I'll have to check those guys out. So you got a copy of the new record? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Well, I, not an actual copy, but they sent me a download. Some MP3s. So, yeah. Very cool. But uh, let's uh, kind of go back to the, the new record a little bit. Uh, you remember the, the first time you actually heard the, the final mastered version of it? Yes, I do. I, um, I actually worked with um, this guy, Chris Granger, who's a producer, mix engineer out of um, Nashville. And he and I mixed the record together. Um, he flew up to Chicago for a couple days, got the bones of the record sounding good, and then he flew back to Nashville. He and I kind of went back and forth. He would send notes, and I brought the mix to the finish line. And then, um, um, and then we had a guy out of Precision Mastering out in LA mix it. And I'm kicking myself for getting his name. But um, he did an awesome job. And, uh, I hadn't slept for about a month. We had our deadline to, to get it off to mastering because we had a small window. Mm -hmm. And um, we got it back about a week later and just, just thrilled with it. We didn't even go back with edits. We were just, just done. Happy with the way it turned yeah. out. Yeah, really happy. We felt like that it was sounded bigger and better than the first record, so mm -hmm. and that's what we really were shooting for. And you, do you know what the initial reaction from the label was when they heard it? They were thrilled. They loved it. They were, they were, they got super excited about the demos. And in fact, we had a deadline for. They they threw out an initial deadline of um, summer, 2011, for record release. Wow. And uh, yeah, it was real aggressive. Um, and we. We just weren't working at that pace, but I think that when they heard the demos, they thought that it was strong enough um, and interesting enough that it was worth the wait to push the deadline back. So, I mean, that to us is just, it's cool when you have that kind of freedom, you know, I mean, nobody's happy about pushing back deadlines, but if you know that it's going to yield results, everyone can kind of rally. Definitely. If I'm one of, you know, listening to the stuff, I, I think, you know, I would hate to hear it if you guys had to rush it and release it earlier. Yeah. You know, I don't know if it would have sounded as good. I uh, definitely would not have. Definitely. And then some of those songs happened pretty late in the game, too. Some came together pretty late in the game. Yeah. So, it was, I was glad that it, we took our time with it. Yeah. Well, man, I think that covered just about everything. Uh, awesome. Any last comments you want to talk about there? You know, just keep in touch with, keep in touch with us on Facebook um, and also jazzmusic.com. We've actually shot 30 to 50 second video clips of all the songs on the new record in our rehearsal space. We had this artist come in and he just did this awesome mural. And uh, we're going to be releasing that really soon, leading up to the record. So, yeah, so keep in touch. And outside of the tour dates with Cabo that we're going out for three weeks, we've got um, Rock, Oklahoma, we're going to be at um, Point Fest in St. Louis, at U Fest in um, Phoenix, and then uh, hopefully some more lining up soon. Mm -hmm. Now, you guys, uh, speaking of festival, it's just kind of the moment question here. Um, I know you guys did a uh, rock fest up at KC. Yeah. And what what are, you, what are your memories of that that you experience? Know, that was that was an awesome show. It was a lot of fun, and um, it was pouring down rain all day. And they called it Mud Fest. Yeah. Because people were just sliding all over the place. But you know what? People didn't 
people didn't care. They were still having a blast. And I remember hopping off the stage into the crowd in the rain with my wireless and just singing the song terrible. I just had this kind of moment in the rain with the crowd. It was awesome. Yeah. It was a good time. You guys had that show? Yeah. Well, I actually have a couple of my photographers who are shooting that show. And, uh, we've actually got some pictures of you doing that. Oh, really? That's funny you would say that. You got to uh, email them to me. Yeah. I, yeah, I would love I'll, them for my scrapbook. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I, uh, I had four photographers out there that day. So we uh, documented it. Oh, cool. Way, so. Yeah, I'll definitely I'll email those to you. Awesome. Yeah, it's, For the moment, just go with the flow. Yeah. yeah. Just kind of get out there. It felt bad there in the rain. I'm like, felt like joining them for a minute as long as my mic didn't electrocute me. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, it didn't. You're still here. So. Still here. All right, man. Cool.